everyone, welcome to Seek Up. This is where you get to explore how to raise your vibration, take your mind to totally new levels, and really bring the inspiration of the yoga path into your everyday life. And I'm here today with a really special guest named Frances Cole Jones, and she actually helped me name this talk show. There you go. Yeah, I'm really excited to, <laughs> to get into um, just everything that you are and sharing your presence and your beauty with all of our viewers and all of our subscribers. So I think that people don't know you, but we've known each other for a long time. 20 plus years. Oh my goodness. <laughs> now that makes us sound a little old, huh? No, no. We're ageless. Ageless. We yes. do yoga. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chris, I remember meeting you in New York City. Yes. Yeah. And so, where are you from? And you're, are you from New York? I was born in Manhattan. A true New Yorker. Uh, a yes, born and raised in Manhattan, and came to yoga late, and reluctantly. Mm. You know, mainly to prove that yoga didn't have any value. <laughs> well, I was like, this is stupid. Watch me. And then I was like, oh, hello. So, yeah, there you go. The, what you resist persists. Absolutely. Yeah. So would you tell us a little bit about yourself? You're an author and an entrepreneur and a sort of a, a media coach and just everything. Yes. Um, I started my business in 1997. It's called Cole Media Management. And it is basically it works across the spectrum of industries. Uh, so everything from fashion to banking to art um, to help whomever needs me to present their best self. Uh, so all different kinds of situations occur apparently where people need to either talk to the press or give a speech and then they call me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've written three books. So How to Wow, mm -hmm. Proven Strategies for Selling Your Brilliant Self in Any Situation, <laughs> uh, The Wow Factor, and wow your way into the job of your dreams. It sounds like it's all about wow. It's all about wow in my house. Yeah. yeah. And what's interesting about this is that you're also a dedicated Ashtanga yoga practitioner and an authorized Ashtanga yoga teacher. Yes. I have managed, yes, to do both. Mm. Thereby proving that, you know, practi while practice doesn't necessarily make perfect, mm -hmm. it's enough to show up on the mat. Mm -hmm. But I always say when people, you know, ask how you do everything, it's, it's, um, it's a matter of returning again and again and again and again. Because mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't an overnight process, but it definitely happened eventually. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I love about you, Francis, is your wit. I feel like you just have this sparkly wit and super fast. And I think it's one of the very first things that I ever um, sort of came to know about you. I don't know if you remember, but we were practicing in New York City at the old Juva Mukti space in a Mysore style class. And this is when I first really joined the Mysore style Ashtanga Yoga method before I'd ever been to India. Now, you're a New Yorker, and I'm a Miami girl. And I came to New York, and I remember putting on small shorts, just because that's what I did for practice, and it was hot. And I remember I was very tan compared to your average New Yorker. And me, <laughs> and in any situation. <laughs> yes. I think that, you know, yeah. a lot of the years go by, and nothing changes. Anyway. <laughs> I remember being in the changing room, and you came up to me, and you were like, so, are you Brazilian or something? No, I did not <laughs> <say that. laughs> Oh, bless me. It was so funny. I was like, <laughs> I just remember laughing at that. And I just loved you right from that moment. I just okay. thought she's funny and honest and I want to know her. And I'm so glad that I have. Well, you know that my informal name for all those shorts is called, I call them clown car shorts. Yes. <laughs> because I feel like, how are you going to stuff that much stuff in that little tiny space? Mm -hmm. It doesn't work for me. But it looks great <laughs> on you. The stuff meaning like <laughs> Everything. your stuff. All the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like your private stuff. All of mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Clown car shorts. I yeah. was imagining it maybe the other way, like because the clowns are wearing the small shorts, then we can fit more of them in the no, car. No, no, no. No. No, it's stuffing lots of big things into little things. Anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think that were we in Mysore together on our first trips to India? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so how was that trip for you? As you know, uh, a one day in my, it's like my sort of days are like dog years. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, um, there's too much time on your hands. There's a lot of drama. <laughs> you really have nothing else to do but have everything be really dramatic. Because, um, so it was interesting in that sense. I don't think I've ever been 
so subjected to that much drama in that short amount of time. Mm -hmm. But it's a um, good practice, you know. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> did you have any illusions like I did when I when I went for the first time that you know when I would land in Mysore that I would land in India to like uh, a world of sort of peaceful, perfect beings? And that, were, I mean, maybe maybe you were less naive than I was, but I went and just expected everyone to be people, and I was overwhelmed with the drama also. Yeah. You know, um, did that illusion crack for you, or did you just were you a, a New Yorker at heart, so you never had that illusion? Um, I've been to India once before, so mm -hmm. to a to a retreat uh, center, um, Sri Ramana Maharshi's ashram. And so I'd seen, yeah, that humanity is humanity, mm -hmm. no matter what you, uh, you know, what you wrap it up in. Mm -hmm. We've all got our funky stuff mm -hmm. that we're working out. Which type of drama do you remember from Mysore? Hard to pick. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much of it. <laughs> Hard to pick. On a happy note, though, it wasn't drama, but it was exciting. I was in India with you when you met your husband. Yes, yeah, so that was, was like our for... second trip. Yes. Yeah, and so oh, Tim and I met in Kovalam Beach. We were on the same airplane. I know. And you were there, and we... Well, met. you wrote me, you emailed me, because yeah. you went a week or two ahead of me, and I got yeah. an email from you like, I met the <laughs> nicest man on the plane. He's Danish, and he carried my mat for me. I love these however many years later, your poor husband's still dragging your mats around, but I mean, bless him. <laughs> but he is, he's such a sweetheart. So. He's, he's that was Beautiful. It was beautiful yeah. to watch that romance yeah. unfold. Yeah. yeah, there were actually a lot of romances that happened then. There were some other There's couples. That, always that, Mysore romance. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I um I I was interesting because I I realized that I mean I found love there, but this was in a period where it was the last thing that I ever wanted. I started off on that trip thinking I'm finally going to just be on my own two feet. Right. I'm just going to. I had this dream, that I read The Alchemist, and I was going to go on this round-the-world plane ticket by myself and go on this soul journey to the center of myself. And then here I am on the first airplane and uh, that I take out of the United States, and I'm already head over heels for some guy. I remember saying to myself, actually, Kino, this is the first boy you meet. You need to calm down. Right. You need to calm down. Yeah. Well, I knew your number was up because Tim said to me, Kino, she is just like a chocolate-covered cherry. <laughs> she is like a box of chocolate-covered cherries. And I'm like, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Not going to get rid of that one. <laughs> <laughs> this is love. Yeah. So, it was so sweet. And it's still love, you yeah. know, all these yeah. years later. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember being in Kovalam and um, being in India and very much sitting with this concept of what am I going to do with my life? And this is something I think happens to people in India. You know, you travel to India and you're practicing this intensive yoga, which then casts light on your values as a sort of, you know, human being in our contemporary capitalist society. And I remember sitting there thinking, you know, who am I and what is my purpose? I remember talking to you about that, and you were so influential. I just remember um, talking to you about, well, what is my profession, and who am I, and what is my purpose? So I'm wondering if you have some same advice for people out there that are maybe feeling lost and feeling purposeless and yet grinding away at a job and yearning for the trip of their dreams or yearning to just find out who they are. I mean, there are a couple of things. I think that, you know, there's a an idea that like anything that you do can be made sacred mm -hmm. and that comes across a I mean there are a variety of different philosophers who talk about that you know whether it's Buber or um, this one or that one and I think that that is an important thing to keep in mind that all work is worship mm -hmm. if you do it with the correct attitude and the correct mindset so I, I mean in my dream world we don't differentiate if you're putting your whole soul into designing, you know, a handbag, then that's your whole soul and you've done it and that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the other thing that I want people to think about is that too often we wait for people to give us permission to be qualified, to be ready. Um, we feel like, well, I'll take another course or I'll, you know, pay one more person or I'll, and I do want certain people to have qualifications, like I want my surgeon to have gone to medical school and I prefer for anybody who's building a bridge to have gotten a really good degree in their engineering classes. But you know, for a lot of stuff, you can't really wait for someone to tell you that you're ready. You decide. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and then you turn over the results. And that's really the trickiest bit. So how do you know you're ready? You know you're ready when you really can't 
think of any reason why not. Mm -hmm. That's valid, mm -hmm. you know. And you can mm -hmm. tell when something's an excuse. Yeah. So and you're just you buying time. Mm -hmm. Do you know that way of muscle testing yourself? No. To see if you're if you're telling the truth about something. Is this the circle? The hold your finger in a circle. Yes. Thing? Have yeah. you done this? Okay. Yes. Or should we show? Do yeah. you want to show yeah, people? Yeah, yeah, let's show it. So, so what you do is you ask yourself a yes or no question, and then and then explain what's going on. So, so you have your two fingers that you're making circles. Here which you do. Two you're the yoga person. The index finger and the thumb. All right. Well, the index finger of that. Thank you, Kino. And so you ask yourself a yes or no and you question. Have to, you have to lace the index finger of the thumb on the left side with the index finger and the thumb on the right side to make oh, two that's right. circles. Okay. okay. We have two circles. Okay. Thank you, madam. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then what you do is you ask yourself a yes or no question. Okay. So whatever that might be, should I have mushrooms for dinner? Um, apparently <laughs> we not. We don't want mushrooms. <laughs> our, no of our circles. No, no much. The circles <laughs> broke. All right, but what okay. you do is you ask yourself these yes or no questions, and if it's a yes answer, bizarrely, and my husband always thinks that I'm faking, but it's I'm not, uh -huh. um, the, the circles don't break. Okay. And, uh, and so what questions should we ask ourselves about purpose now? Is my current job the, my life's calling? Okay. Do you want to ask with me? All right, well. Okay. Is my current job my life's calling? Uh-oh. Uh, I got it. Yours is, you are on the right track. But see, you know, this makes sense to me because I really do struggle all the time because I go back and forth, um, you know, and I want, I want, yes, I want every aspect of the work that I do to be filled with purpose. Mm -hmm. So, and I, you know, I don't know. Sometimes, every, I think everybody asks themselves, is this what I was put on the yeah. planet to do? Absolutely. I mean, I think everybody but mm -hmm. Mother Teresa is struggling with that one. <laughs> you probably asked that at some moment Maybe to she get to where she was. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So it's a good question to keep asking yourself. I don't think that you ever get to a definitive place where you're like, yeah. yes, mm -hmm. now I am complete. No. Yeah. <laughs> I remember the question I asked myself when we, when we first met. Um, I was asking myself this question in New York, and I'm still asking myself this question in Kovalam. I was saying, you know, um, what is it that I've been put on this earth to do, and how is it that I can do it with all my heart? Right. And I just didn't know what it was because it was like, well, there was something about, well, I'm teaching yoga, and that's okay, but it, was, it didn't really feel, I, I, hadn't, I hadn't got this thing where that was it. And then there was one well, writing, and I was a freelance journalist, and then I had this, and I'm like, ah, that, was, that wasn't it. There was something. I loved that. And then there was this thing about I was in school, and I loved school, and so there were all these different faculties, and I remember finding it so hard to merge. And you were really instrumental because you said something like, I see you as sort of a body-mind professor. And this kind of elevated the yoga to its deeper purpose and then kind of integrated both the writing and the academics. And I think it's a really amazing quality that you have really to hone in on um, or home in on someone's kind of, kind of bigger purpose mission. How do people do that for themselves? Do they have to hire you? Is that what it is? No, we know actually it's a really interesting thing to do that can be super helpful is, is to have 10 friends or five friends give you... Uh, ten words that describe you mm -hmm. to them. Single words. We so, did this. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a great, it's a great thing. I do it all mm -hmm. the time. So whether it's passionate or curious or difficult or all these different kinds of things, they don't. They have to be negative and positive because mm -hmm. nobody's perfect. Right. Um, What's so, the balance? 50, 50, 50 no, or but like just, 80, you don't, 20? You don't want people to just tell your friends and family not to edit themselves because mm -hmm. there's no downside. Mm -hmm. the, you know, there's the back of the hand on everything. Um, you know, you... And also sometimes what someone sees as a negative, it could actually be a positive if you flip it around. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. You know, like, like being stubborn is also being tenacious. Yes, I, I'd say that all the time. Like, you know, my husband is super, super easy going, which is fantastic when I want him to drop everything he's doing and, you know, come to the beach with me. But, you know, is less, is less fantastic when the bills need to get paid. But you can't yeah. complain about that quality. Yeah. So every quality has, you know, elements of yay and hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm.